we are live. Okay. Good afternoon, everyone. Welcome, one and all, right across the diaspora. Um, this is the part where the Jamaica Diaspora Education Task Force is on, and we're ready to celebrate with everybody across the diaspora, diaspora day. Um, welcome. Um, my name is Dr. Duane Dice, and I'm the chair of the Education Task Force, um, hailed from Jamaica. I grew up in a very small community um, known as Murray Mountain Saint, in St. Anne. Uh, I was born in, in Kingston, Jubilee Hospital, to be um, specific. Um, I went to the Mormont All Age School at the time, it's Mormont Primary and Junior and the Infant School now, and then to the Abutna Gallimore High School and Brownstone Community College and Catholic College of Mandeville in Jamaica. I want to say big up to my Jamaican teachers and, and the friends who are a part of the, the area. Okay, our theme for today, um, today's celebration is Heroes in Education. And over the past seven years, the Education Task Force has embraced the mission of supporting educational initiatives in the diaspora by calling on primarily Jamaicans and others to give back to Jamaica. This focus of giving back latches onto a deeper concept of people first. It is as a people-centered approach that is easily recognized in the very essence of what makes us humans. Our Jamaican motto alluded to this fact that out of many, we are one, one people all over the world. But we are connected by our roots and the education now causes that we hold dear to our hearts. Everything can be influenced from the education sector. That is the recognizable greatest function of education. We can influence change among dysfunctional families, child development agencies, educational reform personnel, implementing emerging technologies, enhance innovative thinking and a growth mindset among students, even if they are very, very poor. As a result of all of these um, ideas, the function that we have, we have reaffirmed our partnership with the Ministry of Education in Jamaica and the Jamaica Teachers Association, along with our unwavering collaboration with educators, educational leaders, and alumni groups all across the diaspora. These bolster our purpose and objectives, all in the spirit of making a difference in the lives of our people. So moving forward, we have, in the education task force diversified the task force itself to include seven subcommittees, namely mentor, mentoring of students, educational leadership, school and community partnership, professional development and learning, technology and education, instructional planning collaboration, and alumni groups. We want all educational personnel to have an area to focus their energy and passion to make the greatest impact. So everyone um, is welcome and everyone can take a part, be a part of one or the other group under the umbrella group of the education task force. We also want to target specific issues through innovative thinking while we collaborate with our partners. And so today, we celebrate our heroes in education and we salute them for their dedication to our students, to our families and to our beloved country, Jamaica, land we love. We have a great program ahead of us. 
moderated by our own Ms. Leslie and Samuel, the vice chair of the Education Task Force. So let us celebrate our heroes. Our first um, speaker is none other than Dr. Hansel Fletcher. He is my role model and he's a founding member of the, the Education Task Force some seven years ago. So I, it's my pleasure to introduce him. Um, Dr. Flesher received his, his bachelor's degree and master's in biology from um, Walla Walla University and his PhD in microbiology and immunology from Temple University School of Medicine. He is currently the, an as, assistant dean for graduate student affairs in the School of Medicine at Loma Linda University. He's also a professor and a vice chair for the Department of Basic Sciences, Division of Microbiology and Molecular Genetics. He is also the chair um, on the Committee for Diversity and Inclusion for International Association for Dental Research. And I'm going to pause right there because you can read all about him uh, with, in details on our website. Um, Dr. Fletcher is married to Pauline Fletcher, and they have two adult children who are currently um, in, in, the medic, in medical school at Loma um, Linda University. So I want everyone to welcome all, one of our founding members, Dr. Hansel Fletcher. Over to you, sir. All right, thank you, Dr. Dice. Um, it's a pleasure to be with the group and also to reach out to the diaspora. About seven years ago, um, birth was given to the Jamaican um, Diaspora Education Task Force. And I remember attending a diaspora conference there in Montego Bay and meeting with Leo. Um, we started talking about our passions for building the education infrastructure in Jamaica. And we had several um, specific aims that we were hoping to achieve, one of which is to build capacity in Jamaica, provide the power of the diaspora to support the training of our teachers um, in the education sector. Because Jamaica is now in the sixth period of its history, which started in 1962 when Jamaica became independent and so for us to progress as a country, for us to get to our full potential, education is central to that mission. It is central for further development, for sustained socioeconomic growth, and also to develop a skill and adaptable workforce, which is one of the most critical determinants and, in this, and an indispensable requirement for continual improvements in productivity, technology, and education. So we've, we've focused on education and um, over the past seven years, we've made um, significant strides in, in training some of our teachers. We've had workshops, um, we've had um, education summits. Um, we have unleashed the power of the diaspora to give back to Jamaica to develop that infrastructure. We've certainly, as you've heard before, coordinated uh, and collaborated with the Ministry of Education and also the Jamaican Teachers Association, and we have um, instituted or we have began programs that certainly have made an impact because we know education is more than learning. It is the igniting of a passion that will be relentless in its drive to achieve the impossible goals. Talk to anybody from the country, anybody from uh, a section of the rural community that is poor they have dreams and they can achieve it. And education is one way to make sure that our country is on a path to being a first world country. That's the dream in 2030 and we can make it. And um, the education task force certainly is uh, committed to our mission to expand and build capacity in Jamaica for us to achieve our goals. So for the past seven years I've been involved and it's, uh, we're excited. We have achieved quite a bit and there is more to come. Um, there is a young group now that um, is leading out and um, 
we're supporting, um, fully supporting, and the best days are ahead of us. That's Thanks awesome. So Thank you so much, Dr. Fletcher and Dr. Dice for starting us off this morning. I'm hopeful that everyone can hear us. I'm sure you all will tell me if you can't. Um, um, I have had the pleasure of knowing uh, Dr. Fletcher for, for several years, and I have to tell you, um, he is a stalwart. I am, I am so pleased to have made his acquaintance and to actually call him friend. At this point, um, your contributions have been phenomenal, sir. Thank you. And just because um, the younger generation have taken over um, uh, doesn't mean that uh, we are out of the game as yet. You notice I'm including us in the same boat there, <laughs> Dr. Fletcher. We, we still have a lot to accomplish. There you go. Thank you so much. So um, it's my pleasure to, to uh, introduce our, our next uh, panelist. Her name is Dr. Kazan Troop. She's a graduate of Micro Teachers College, the University of the West Indies and Walden University. A certified leadership development and performance coach, Dr. Troop is a member of the Jamaica Combined Cadet Force with the rank of captain and a justice of the peace. She has written several publications and has served as the vice president of the Association of Principals and Vice Principals and a member of the ethics committee of the Inter-Secondary School Sports Association, or ISA as we all know it. A former principal and education officer, Dr. Troop has engaged in several international educational pursuits in China, France, Fiji, England, the USA, and in the Caribbean. A highly skilled educator with expertise in transformational leadership, educational policy in implementation, result-based management, training, and behavior change consultancy. Dr. Troop is the acting chief education officer in the Ministry of Education, Youth, and Information with key responsibility for the successful operation of all public educational institutions in Jamaica. Ladies, gentlemen, participants, um, all please uh, join me in welcoming uh, as she brings greetings, uh, Dr. Kazan Troop. Thank you so much for having me and for that wonderful introduction, Leslie Ann. It's great to be here. It's great to see my people on a day when we are celebrating our heroes in education. And I'm certain that we are all heroes as we continue to give back. I mean, education is a great equalizer and it is the only gift that we can give to someone to remove their social challenges and of course to improve the economic conditions of our country. So I am very, very happy to be here and just pleased to update you on what we have been doing since COVID-19. Um, as you know, Jamaica has been hit by this sudden disruption, but our, as, as our education system ought to do, we have to be resilient. And I saw what we did quickly, we shifted into emergency teaching. And so we are proud to report to you that Jamaica was able to continue its education system even during this time of the COVID pandemic. And we have been doing so through the provision of quality education and support. So how have we helped our schools? We have provided to our schools operational guidelines. It would be new for most of our leaders and teachers to teach from a distance. And so as a Ministry of Education, we had to provide a manual to guide our institutions in how to lead from a distance. And quickly, we also moved into training of our teachers and our leaders to operate a remote learning environment. And so our schools were able to continue in their operation and to impact learning. Of course, we were challenged. We were challenged because there was an over-reliance on virtual learning. It is the easiest route to take during this period of time. And so our system depended on that. As a Ministry of Education, what we did we broke out partnership with our internet providers to make sure that mobile data could have been provided at a reduced cost. And in some instances, the Ministry of Education provided educational grants to cover the cost of the mobile data for our students and also our teachers. 
we have also provided nutritional support for our children. In our overarching plan of education in Jamaica, we are big on equal opportunity, quality education, equity and inclusion. And so those governing principles would have guided our responses. So students who were in need of nutritional support under our national school feeding program, we provided meals for them. And when it became difficult to have them receive the baked products, the actual products, we actually partnered with another ministry to provide the grants for our parents to have the money in their hands to procure the meals for our children. Because we believe that the nutritional support is just as important if we are going to support learning. And of course, with the dynamics of the pandemic, our parents would have needed support. So we quickly launched our parental helplines that provided psychosocial care for our parents. So those who were struggling, how do I now adjust to this new normal? How do I provide parental inclusion and support for our children during the learning episodes? We actually had training session for our parents and an avenue for them to talk and provide, I mean, support, trained support for them to navigate this new normal. That has been a major part of our response during this period of disruption. We are pleased to report, ladies and gentlemen, that most of our students have been engaged throughout this process. We are challenged, however, by internet access and of course, technological devices. So some of our students were not able to continue their learning online. But what we did as a Ministry of Education through our regional offices, we provided printing facilities so schools were able to print materials and to distribute these materials to the students in need to make sure that they are also engaged, even though they are challenged. So we had a mixed modality in our response. We had televised learning. We partnered with our television providers to provide learning online, on television, live and rebroadcast lessons. We also, ladies and gentlemen, moved into creating our own e-home TV network so the Ministry of Education now has its own live TV network where we will continue to engage our students and teachers from a distance, even beyond COVID-19. So we have been disrupted, but we have remained resolute and resilient. We are proud to let you know that our teachers have benefited from their training. They are using this new knowledge and we will continue to have ongoing training for them because this is new for them. Now, with observing social distancing, our physical spaces will be challenged. So we will be in need of that. Right now, I'm proud to report that we are doing our assessment on the ground and we are developing our budget for support to look at temporary learning spaces to make sure that learning will never be compromised for our children because we believe education is the best gift that you can give to anyone. And though we are challenged, we are not giving up. We are listening to our stakeholders and we are modifying the way forward so we can maintain quality and equity and equal educational opportunities for all. So that is where we are right now as an education sector, but we are proud to report that Jamaica has remained resolute during this period of disruption. Thank you very much. Thank you so very much, uh, Dr. Troop. I have to tell you that um, I, I am delighted to hear of the progress that we have made um, in Jamaica. And you know, we have a new normal here, right? Because okay. distance learning and online education is now going to be a part of, of what we do every day now. Every day. It's going to be the exception. Truly yeah. respect the challenges that you have outlined. And I am hopeful that all of us within hearing distance of your words will find a way to assist because yeah. together, I think there is much that we can accomplish. So we look forward to working with you as and the ministry as we go forward to make Jamaica um, a better place for our, uh, and as good as some of us had it. <laughs> Thank, <laughs> for you, those so yet much, yeah. Thank you so forward much. to the partnership. Absolutely. Thanks so much. Moving on then, um, it's my pleasure to introduce uh, Mr. Seymour Mattis um, from the Union. You, 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 United Kingdom. <laughs> For a minute there, what, what you came in again? So sorry. Seymour Mattis is an educator, HR consultant, special entrepreneur, and executive director and founder of Vital Education Enterprise and Training, or Vital Eat for short. Here to provide a perspective from the United Kingdom, please welcome uh, Seymour Mattis.
Thank you very much. Uh, good afternoon, uh, family. Um, uh, as our Nas Mandela stated, that education is the most powerful weapon we can use to change the world. So I do endorse all that been said to uh, so far, and thank uh, Dr. Kassenchu for for reminding us of that. Um, well, my name is Seymour Matthews. I'm the chairman for Jet UK. I'm a teacher by profession, a STEM specialist, and also an HR consultant mentioned there. Um, we have a structure in Jet UK, which is um, vice chair after the chair, which is Dr. Carl Nicholson, who is a, he's a head teacher, principal in your terms. Um, she actually runs a special educational needs school and also a secretary, um, Jacqueline Lewis, who is a senior lecturer uh, and, and teacher's trainer, a STEM teacher's trainer at our university, University of Hampton. And we have other uh, prominent uh, board members and members. Um, our previous uh, project that we've actually run in Jamaica uh, took place in 2015. Um, that's when it started. We actually renovated Padmore Primary School. We painted Buff Bay a Primary School as well as Bull Bay School, uh, um, a school that I went to, uh, was St. Andrew, <laughs> St. Andrew, um, former student. Um, and in addition to that, we actually run teacher STEM workshops at Michael College University on, on in 2017 at the Diaspora Day um, service. Or, um, further, we, we run um, Creative Future, pass, partnering with Imperial College London, with Dr. Sunder Papahola, and we actually, this project took um, the shape of a bridge design and building for grade five, six, and nine and 10 students. That was absolutely fantastic. Um, we addressed the, the four C's, which is um, collaboration, creativity, critical thinking, and anyone remember the other one? So there are four, communication. Okay, mm -hmm. so those are the four. All right, and um, we followed that up uh, with another uh, creative uh, future program, partnering with the uh, BLEEP program, B-L-I-E-P, which stands for Bright to Life Incentive Education Project. And um, that was aimed at teachers as well as students, um, um, grade five and 10 students. And the teachers uh, that were trained, uh, that was conducted by um, Jacqueline Lewis. That was approximately 100 um, teachers um, learning uh, practicals in how to deliver STEM uh, to students. Um, that particular project, we actually did uh, a tower, uh, to design and build a tower. That's what the students did, design and build a tower. Um, and that went down very well uh, as well. We have to run that across various parishes. Um, the, the final one, which is Kingston, um, Portland, St. Catherine and St. Elizabeth. That was attended by various other uh, schools from various parishes in Jamaica. So we had about 1200 students and uh, approximately 100 teachers got trained in that one as well. Now, our current uh, project that we're working on, it's basically based on our expertise, and that is in STEM, uh, special education needs and disability, literacy, entrepreneurship, and modern foreign languages. We aim to sort of um, expand on uh, support for Jamaica in more than foreign languages like French and German, because we have these expertise that can deliver that. Uh, future projects um, is we, we aim to, to follow this up using uh, the present technology that, that's available, which is Zoom and webinars, and uh, to deliver ongoing workshops. In terms of uh, COVID-19, more. Uh, I, said, uh, I need you to I need you to, to move this along for us, please. We're running. Yes, yeah, yeah, so, well, I'm finishing now anyway. Please. Yeah, COVID, Thank COVID, you. COVID, yes, I'm finishing. Uh, COVID-19, uh, we had to cancel our 2020 uh, plan workshops in Jamaica. Uh, however, we aim to uh, continue this at some point. 
in the future. Partnering, we partner with the Ministry of Education, Youth Information, as well as other um, colleagues, Imperial College London businesses, and also the, the Jamaica National, um, Jamaica um, um, VM Foundation, and that's where we are. So thank you very much. Our website, I must say, if you want to know more about what we do, um, you can look at this here. Yeah. <laughs> I, I did do a little sketch of this, although we, that should be available anyway by other means. But this is uh, our email address is inquiries at jetuk, jet-uk.org.uk. And uh, also you can email me at seymour.mattis at jet-uk.org.uk. And website, as you can see here, www.jet-uk.org.uk. And Facebook is jet-uk.org -E -E or Twitter, jet -E UK three all capital. Thank you very much for listening. Thank you so much, uh, Seymour. I appreciate that. Uh, there, we have always known that there's a lot going on in the UK, and you just proved it for us. And I know we only heard the half. Um, at this point, we had planned to show you all uh, a video uh, entitled "Heroes in Education," but since we are so pressed for time. Um, that information uh, will be available, it will be posted so that uh, everyone can see it. So in the interest of time, please forgive us um, so that we can uh, move along. But I would like to say, at least at this point, a uh, special thank you to Ms. Uh, Tash Tashaka Winter, who helped us to actually put that together. At this point, then we're going to move quickly into our robotics segment. Um, and, and share with you some um, groups that are very active in Jamaica to promote uh, robotics in our schools. First up is Mr. H Marvin Hall, who is the founder of Halls of Learning, an educational services company that provides engineering and robotics education in Jamaica, and that serves over a dozen primary and secondary schools and more than 2,000 plus children. Please join me in welcoming Mr. Marvin Hall, who will share the robotics from a primary school level. Marvin. Thank you, Leslie Ann. Um, thank you for having me on this panel. Uh, greetings to Jamaicans, both local and global. Um, for us to be heroes in education, we're standing on the giant of every teacher that taught us, every school that we attended. And so we have to give thanks for the work that was done before us. Um, I'm going to do a quick presentation um, and share my screen with you. Just give me a second. All right. Uh, give me one more second. Okay. See, are you seeing my screen yet? Nope. Yet. All right. Okay. Here we go. Okay. Are we there? Yep. Quickly, please. Yes. So we're gonna start with a quick video, um, just to showcase some of the work that we've been doing over the years. Sound isn't coming across so well on the video, Marvin. Why don't we post it on the website after all? And you can just share your remarks. Thank you.
Marvin, we're not hearing any audio, should we? Um, what? Uh, we're not hearing any audio, should we be? Yeah. Oh, you're not hearing any audio? No, no, we haven't heard any audio. And maybe you might want to, to get to your presentation um, and we can post this later, perhaps. All right, let me check. All right, so I'll just stop, stop the presentation there. Um, and then we can go on to the next segment. So how's of learning? We're gonna just outline nine quick things that we do. I know that we're pressed for time. So we do robotics and coding clubs. Um, after school activities where children come and build robots and program them. We do in-school workshops where we introduce children to computer science and coding as a timetable subject, as well as collaborating with local foundations to offer the um, hour of code and um, scratch the introductory stuff. We do summer camps, that's number four. Um, children do weekly courses and they get to play, play, explore in STEAM or STEM as we're talking about now. Um, and we have an annual outreach program that's a one day expo that provides free robotics coding workshops to children. We also do STEAM workshops that includes toy making and game design. We offer executive workshops for top level executives to learn problem solving. And we are the organizers of the national, um, national organizers of the World Robot Olympiad. And that is a global robotics competition for primary and secondary schools. And since that's since 2018. And since 2009, we have been coaching robotics teams and taking them to the state championships overseas. I know I'm pressed for time. I have posted my link to my presentation um, and I'll stop there. Thank you so much, Marvin, so, we appreciate it. Um, you know, uh, I am a believer in, in doing all that we can for our primary schools, because I think if we do for our primary schools, then guess what? Um, all, all of our schools beyond that benefit. So thank you very much for the work that you're doing, particularly with our, our young people. At this point, I'd like to move quickly on to Gavin Samuels, who I have known for the past, oh my goodness, um, more than 10 years um, from he had his eyes at his knees at Jamaica College, uh, which is when I think he was introduced uh, to robotics. Gavin is currently the affiliate, affiliate partner representative for FIRST Technology Challenge or FTC Jamaica, a program um, whose mission is to promote science and technology by providing high school youths with a program that requires them to apply engineering principles in co a competitive environment using robotics. Uh, Gavin is also the program manager for the first global challenge, which takes students across the globe for a similar competition with other high school students. Um, across the, the world to share with us a, a little bit about his program that focuses on the secondary school level. Please welcome Gavin Summers. Right, thank you. You should be seeing my screen now. Yes. Okay, fantastic. All right, so I, um, I must start by, by saying just how honored I am to be presenting alongside some of the most prestigious presenters perhaps probably my life, <laughs> um, but my slide is not nearly as, 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 as fancy as, as Marvin's, but I will go quickly. Um, I'll just start by talking about some of the organizations that have supported us that are from the diaspora. Uh, initially, I was a part of the team at Jamaica College and that program, that robotics program at JC was started by the Jamaica College old boys in New York. And it was supported by a lot of the chapters in the diaspora. Um, and we were able to, as a result of their connections and reaching out to local companies, expand the, 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 the program and eventually getting two, two, two teams from the school and traveling and then becoming a very competitive team, which is something that takes time and my experience in robotics was such a life changer for me that I thought it was very important for me to do everything I can 
to ensure that these opportunities are made available to more students. And the, as we started to look into the possibility of bringing FIRST to Jamaica, we had the opportunity of doing the FIRST Global Challenge. And the FIRST Global Challenge is managed by UJA, Union of Jamaican Alumni Association, which, which Leslie Ann currently runs. Um, and the robotics program specifically is managed by Carly Largi, which, which I must say I'm, I'm, I'm a big thanks to because she's so hands-on and she helps so much, it's, it's incredible. And as a result of their network, the UJA network, we've been able to bring on some, some support from other members of the diaspora. Like for instance, last year, the competition was held in Dubai and we had the support of JMED. Um, so they took really good care of us, met us at the airport with roses, <laughs> you know, really showed the students just how much um, they're, they're happy to see them. And to have that kind of support um, in these different parts of the world is incredible. So the robotics program itself though, um, both programs are at the high school level. Um, First Global is made up of students from multiple schools and they compete internationally every year. The First Tech Challenge is, First Tech Challenge Jamaica is actually a, non, non, a non-profit organization here locally. And we manage, we're the local franchisee for, for the First Tech Challenge program. And we have the program right now in about 60 schools. We had 29 schools competing last year. I think it's actually more, I can't remember. Earlier this year, actually, um, we had of, the, of those schools, seven of which were, were all girls schools. Um, and we, one of the things we really want to focus on is helping our young ladies to understand that, you know, you, there's no such thing as this is for guys and this is for girls. If you are interested in technology and science, you can definitely, this is something you can move forward and, and do. Um, the program has expanded to a point now where um, both programs together work to, to supplement each other because the students from First Tech Challenge we a lot of times make up a part of the first global team. Um, and the first global, first global was one of the first instances where we got robotics um, at the high school level in a lot of other schools. Yuja, I must say again, has been the driving, the main driving force behind that. And even, and, and I mean, when I say driving force, I mean, they travel with us, they help us, they provide resources. They do the majority of the fundraising. Um, and without that type of support from the diaspora, from our alumni associations, from companies um, like JMED, and also the US chapter of some of our big companies like Grace Candy has offices in New Jersey and they help our teams whenever possible, whether in Jamaica. Um, it really would not be possible to make a lot of these experiences available to our students. And the truth is that being a part of a program like robotics can really change the trajectory of a student's life, can open your eyes to what's available, what's in the world. And I am so happy that the, the diaspora has invested so much time and money and effort in supporting these programs over the years. Um, I am going to cut it there since I know we're pressed for time. But if anyone is interested in reaching out to us, you can email me info at jamaicarobotics.org. You can visit our website and here's my phone number as well. And I believe this very short slide will also be available on the website. So thank it you, will. Leslie Ann. It will be. Thank you so much, Gavin. But tell everybody, what does FIRST mean? FIRST stands okay. for? The so FIRST is short for, um, for Inspiration and Recognition of Science and Technology. So it's an Excellent. acronym. Yes. Thank you so much. Ladies and gentlemen, uh, there's a lot going on in the, in the robotics and STEM space in Jamaica. So uh, thanks very much, Gavin and, and Marvin, for sharing a, a little bit uh, about what you are doing. And uh, hopefully others will be as excited as we have over the years in, in the work that you are doing. At this point, we're going to move very quickly into uh, some uh, sharing from our alumni community. As you all are aware, uh, there are many, many alumni 
uh, organizations that exist across the globe. Um, here with us are three umbrella organizations, and I'm going to ask them to go extremely quickly through their slides um, to share a little bit about who they are, where they are, and where we can find out more information about them so that um, we can all ensure that we are actively participating in our alumni associations. We're going to start with... Um, uh, the Alliance of Jamaican Alumni Associations based out of Toronto, Canada. With us is their president, Ms. Rona Dunwell, who is also uh, the president of the Knox Past Students Association Toronto chapter. Tell us, uh, Rona, a little bit about Aja. Am I sharing your screens? Um, I think I think I can do that. Okay. Uh, myself. Right. Um, Great. Just one moment. Actually, can you just go ahead, uh, Leslie, and in the interest sure. of time, if you have that. To... So thanks, thanks, Leslie Ann, and good afternoon from Toronto to everyone uh, out there in the diaspora, all Jamaicans who are listening and watching. Um, so who we are, I represent the Alliance of Jamaican Alumni Association. We're an umbrella organization for alumni associations representing Jamaican educational institution in the GTA. We started in 1988 um, with 13 associations um, and we became incorporated in 1993. Currently, we have over 40 active member associations and the organization is managed by a 13 member board of directors. Our mission is to provide support to member associations who in turn provide assistance to students of Jamaican descent within the Canadian educational system. In addition, we provide support to member associations in their efforts to assist their respective alma mater in Jamaica. We have several programs um, that we use to provide this support, one being the graduates program. It's a program whereby we provide bursaries to uh, students who are graduating high school from the Canadian school system and who have been accepted into tertiary institutions. We have uh, an Emerging Global Leaders um, program that is held annually in Jamaica, where we identify Jamaican high school students with the potential to become instigators of change through leadership and provide them with developmental opportunities. We have a care and share program um, where we provide care packages to those in need, as well as Jamaican international students during the Christmas season. To contact us, we have a website that you can visit, www.ajaacanada.com. You can call us at 416-498-9934 or email us at info at ajaacanada.com. I'll turn things over now to Donovan Wilson, who is the VP for UJA. Not hearing you, Donovan. All right, thank you very much and good afternoon to everyone who has joined in with us here today, right? Um, the Union of Jamaica Alumni Associations, USA Inc. was formed just about 30 years ago by a group of individuals who had the vision to realize that such an organization would certainly be a benefit to our island home. I believe it's somewhere in Proverbs that it is said that where there is no vision, the people perish. And certainly our founders had the vision to get this group going and get us to where we are today. We started out with 16 organizations. Today we have 57 member organizations representing 63 different schools across all 14 parishes in Jamaica. The group is managed by an 11 member executive committee and we work very closely with our organizations to get our, our um, functions completed. You know, many organizations have wide ranging goals, but I think the big thing for UJA has been about building capacity in our schools. There's a lot of focus on high schools, but UJA actually assists with um, getting our pre-primary schools and our primary schools 
you know, on track as well, because the reality is many of the students who go on to high schools are usually from these feeder schools, if you will. In terms of the activities that we perform, I think the one that stands out the most is our water tank program. I don't know if you've ever been driving through the countryside in Jamaica and you drive by a school and you see a tank with the letter U letters UJAA on it. Those tanks are provided by UJA. Gavin mentioned our role with um, First Global, and certainly that has been something that meant a lot to us. But the big one right now, and I would be remiss if I didn't mention it, is that we are working with the Lasco Chin Foundation on care packages, and I'm happy to report that so far, among our alumni members, more than 1,600 packages have been ordered, and more than 1,166 has been delivered so far. In terms of the activities that we have within the diaspora, um, the High School Graduate Awards program is certainly one that many people know about. We provide bursaries to graduate in high school students, but it also includes an essay competition with a trip to Jamaica for the winner. And we've always been very careful to make sure that that essay competition relates to something to do with Jamaica so that you know, for many of these high school graduates, they are not from Jamaica. They were born here in the US. They may have gone back to visit or whatever, but we wanted to make sure that the trip gave them a sense of what Jamaica is like. The Mad Club competition aligned with our Martin Luther King weekend has been something that we became involved in a few years ago. And we've certainly tried as best as we can to take it to another level. And I think it's, seen in the work and the way this math club competition has developed. Of course, I would be remiss without just mentioning Team Jamaica Bickle. As you know, Bickle stands for Food Back Home. Well, that organization certainly has gone above and beyond providing not just food, but transportation, housing, and a stipend, and Yuja has been there with them. If you wish to contact Yuja, perhaps the easiest way, right, is to go to yujausa.org. Our website is a wealth of information about the group and you will find many useful links on that site as you go on. And for my other panelists, if you have schools here that you support or friends here that you support, it is quite likely that they have a connection with Yuja in some way. At this point, I wanna introduce my good colleague, Ms. Carla Myrie. And Carla, we've never met in person, but the first thing that struck me is that you are the past president of the Hamptons All Girls Association and therefore just up the hill from me since I went to St. Elizabeth Technical. Yeah. Ladies and gentlemen, the president of the Jamaica Alumni Association of High Schools in Jamaica, Ms. Carla Myrie. Not hearing you, Carla. Yes, thank you. Thank you very much for that introduction, um, Galvan. And it's our absolute pleasure to be sharing in this JD Tan Jamaica Day event today. Um, Jess is fairly new. We're the new kid on the block. Um, just established about two and a half years ago as an umbrella organization for alumni associations here in Jamaica. Uh, among our core objectives is that of assisting members of the association to promote, improve, and advance their academic programs, as well as um, their cultural, social, and physical development of programs to, um, among their associations. Also important is for us to foster the development of alumni associations, there are a lot of schools, secondary schools now that do not currently have alumni associations. And so we aim to assist um, schools who are, persons who are interested in developing associations for their school or establishing associations for their school. Over the relatively timely, um, sorry, over the relatively short period that we have been in existence, we have been engaging in a number of activities towards meeting or objectives, and the objectives are here um, outlined on the screen. I will just mention a few 
our annual education fair is um, one of the programs that we are really proud of. We have staged at fair two years in a row, and um, it is staged for students of grades 10 to 13 in secondary schools across the island, where we expose them to different issues as it relates to career planning. Now, I'm unfortunately interrupt you please forgive me please put up your last slide for me which shows your contact information and please everyone know that all of these okay. slides are going to be available um, for everyone to view um, at this point we we are really hard pressed this time we have a we have a firm um, stop um, actually before one o'clock uh, for the next program which is actually not a which is a part of the JD town, but not exactly ours. So please allow me uh, to thank each and every one of you um, for participating um, in our forum this morning. Um, I, I would call each of you by name, but you, uh, as you, I am sure you can appreciate, we have um, literally a minute in which to do this. So please accept my personal thanks. Um, today we were charged, we indicated we were going to discuss heroes in education. And so we really hope that you have enjoyed what you have heard and that you are motivated. There is so much that we can do for education in Jamaica. So please join the uh, education task force or join your alumni association. If there isn't one, create one. If you need help to do that, contact one of the umbrella organizations. We are here to help you. Um, help your school to create